You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. All right, so this is going to be a very different type of episode, possibly even a new sub-series. If you follow the podcast, then you know I'm a fan of sub-series. So my podcast is continuing to grow, and thank you to everyone out there listening and supporting it. It truly means the world to me. And because of it, a few individuals have reached out to me asking me to help produce their podcast for their own business. So this episode is a full recording of one of those meetings. Now, as of the recording, they are not yet my clients. But this is a side venture I'm working on to begin producing a variety of podcasts within different industries for different businesses. But the main reason I wanted to share this with you today is because it gives you insight in how I look at marketing and the future of podcasting. There are lots of good pieces of advice here. So if you go to my website, listen to the podcast there, in the show notes, I will have timestamps for key points in the meeting and you can jump around. I will also include a few extra tidbits and notes on the website. Podcasting is a very small part of the future of marketing, but it's going to be huge. Every business should start a podcast. So let's begin here and enjoy. Otherwise, if you're not going to video the podcast, it doesn't matter. It's just audio, right? right? Then you can just have, so I would recommend have a round table okay. sit in the middle. Which we have. Mm-hmm. You have all the um, equipment, if you want to buy the equipment, mounted to everything. Right, you have a little corner desk, kind of like what you have there. Mm-hmm. That's basically like the producer Sam would sit there, audio equipment right there, just to make sure and take notes. And so, how we do the podcast is uh, we use Google Docs, and so you know, the hosts will have the laptop in front of them mm-hmm. with Google Docs open, all the questions there, and you start going through the questions as. If he hears or if he thinks of something, he'll communicate with me directly through Google Docs. And then I see all the notes pop up right there, and I can just automatically ask the guest oh, wow. questions. Yeah, because it, it changed real time. I remember that. Like yeah. Google Docs, when you're editing, the other person can actually see it. Yeah. yeah. So that's what, that's what we use uh, to communicate. Now, it just depends what you guys want to do as far as the podcasting, because... Um, so... Are you guys thinking of doing the podcast together, or are you thinking of doing it separately to kind of build out each of your brands? Well, I mean, like at the end of the day, um, you know, obviously I'm the lender, he's a realtor. So we didn't know if that would be something that's like complement as one podcast or or do it separate. You know what I mean? I think doing it separate would be a little tough, yeah. you know, because of our schedules and but by partnering up, it'll help us like alleviate some of the duties and some of the other stuff, you know. Yeah. But if I were to take on like a full blown show, I would have, it would be tough for me. And I did think with him as well. And if, for that, I think we can like bounce ideas. Yeah. And, yeah. And you also don't need to limit yourself just to that too. You could be like, oh, there's one, there's one episode where I like to focus on lending rather than you know it whatever. A stronger overall dynamic. Too. Right. Exactly. More voices in there. Yeah. yeah. That's that's why we like it. <clears throat> You know, some yeah. I think a, a dual podcast would be cool. Yeah, because I, I think whenever I'm following somebody, just the broader the the library is of their content, you know, it helps me bounce around and kind of you know just gets more intrigues me more. Okay, so you kind of reach out to a broader audience. Yeah. Also. Okay, yeah. so that's where I was going to go to next. Like, do you want to keep it real estate lending focused, or do you want to expand out? Now, I can tell you with mine, I have a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. We have the real realtors where we talk just about real estate with real estate people. Mm-hmm. And then we have the actual interviews where we interview completely random people from outside, you know, from uh, book authors to filmmakers wine to makers. winemakers, a variety of people bring it, uh, and bring them in for the actual interviews. Okay. That allows you to expand your reach, right? Because there's a little bit of something for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. If someone's not really wanting to listen to real estate, they're not going to listen to your podcast if it's all about real estate, right? Yeah. But if they want to listen about, you know, hear something about wine, well, I've got wine stuff on that show. If they want to hear something about uh, cancer survivors and psychotherapists, I've got a show on that. If they want to hear something about fitness and nutrition, I've got two shows about that. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. And I think, like, in our business, when you're building the brand, Mm-hmm. I think that's probably the way to go mm-hmm. for the most part. 
Okay, so I want I, I kind of like to think of it as we're kind of profiling the community. You know, sure. you know, like the you know Marquis and property manager. But part of it is you know he needs to you know essentially sell people on a community. You know, like why should I live here? Yeah. Um, so by going and talking to these people, it's like, hey, you know, this is these are the people who live in this area. This is what the neighborhood and community feels like. So by doing that, you're kind of you, you still got that real estate angle where you're kind of selling the neighborhood to someone, but at the same time, you're just creating this overall variety that you know a lot of people can listen to, and everyone can kind of find their own uh, episodes they can kind of cherry pick that you know and listen to the ones that they like. You know. Um... What I just initially thought of right now, when you guys are bringing this up, is what if you did, what if we always change it up like every six weeks so it's more of a series of something? So let's say, for example, community. So for the next six weeks, we're going to talk about community. And in that, we, we you know talk about the city of Pittsburgh, or then we talk to the mayors and do that. And then the next six weeks is about sales, you know, helping you produce or something of that nature. Um, yeah, so we look at that. Yeah, that's also a very good concept and a good uh way to do it i mean and you can do do it that way too right, right? i mean the good thing about pod so the average podcast right now only lasts about six episodes yeah. that's it and that's because a lot of people start and then they stop because they get busy they don't have the time to do it you know maybe i'm just putting, or... just it's like a gym people. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah yeah you start out like all right i'm gonna do it february 1st rolls around all of a sudden uh, <laughs> fall yeah. off the wagon Right. Like, putting the people together, and we've had cancellations. Sometimes cancellations like the day before. We had two. Sometimes, we had two in the same day. Sometimes yeah. people don't even show up. Like there's this one we had a couple weeks ago where it's like booked way in advance, then all of a sudden days coming up. Hey, ready to go? Hey, you still good? You never. Oh yeah, that was uh, we just, Rob. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rob too. Okay, okay we got a couple of them. Podcasting must be face to face then. It doesn't have to be. We've done it on the phone and, and over uh, Skype and yeah. hang out. Okay. Um, a lot of the podcasts I've listened to, um, like I like the one I like to listen to is uh, the media podcast on Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. But most of those I've heard, it's over the phone. Got it. Um, so, I mean, it's not I, – I personally um, like to kind of get people in, just get that face-to-face. -face. Sure. Um, but that's just, you know, the kind of style I'm trying to get. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those end-all, be-all, you know. Yeah. You can talk on the phone, and honestly, you could, you could, there are some times where you could say, you, you don't even have to mention that they're on the phone, and no one would know. Right. Do you know Greg McDaniels? Greg, it sounds familiar. Yeah, so, um, he was a head trainer for Jay Rockwood. Okay. Um, in Walnut Creek, and he stopped doing that, but, and he, he sells real estate. But him and a partner, Matt Johnson, they started Real Estate Uncensored. So they have a podcast where they do, it's a video podcast, and all their uh, guests are, it's all done by Skype. So everything's Skype with them. They don't have any in-studio. He literally just uses his Apple mm -hmm. you know, ear earbuds, and that's what he uses. So nothing super fancy, but he does Skype interview that way, right? Got it. So that's one way to do it. Me personally, I like to get people in to the actual office to record. It's a little bit harder. It's always easy to schedule people, you know, um, where they're at home, at their office, whatever. But getting people into your office, you get them face to face. I mean, right. th that's our business, right? right. You get in front of people face to face. You build rapport with them, and it also allows you to chat with the people a little bit before and after. And that's kind of what the whole purpose of the podcast is, is right. that you want to meet people, get in front of people you normally would have never talked to, help them get exposure, they in turn help you get exposure, and eventually business down the road, right? right? So that's so I think getting people into the studio is the best way to do it. However, that's not always going to be the case. So you always want to do have a backup right. where you can just Skype someone or do a Google Hangout. And like we did one with someone in Canada who's um, a media, she started a media agency. Got it. Yeah, so I think that's, I, I think I like it being like the front. So I, I know like our, like the first one, obviously, um, could be community. And, and that in itself with Pittsburgh is so easy because it's such a small town that we can't talk to the mayor, we can't talk to all these different people, um, get them in here, probably they would want to do it anyways. So I like the idea of like a series. Yeah. 
because if you look at like NPR, do you listen to podcasts? I've been I've been listening to this one called Mark Guzman Experience. <laughs> <laughs> that one's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you go to like um, NPR or some other NPR, like NPR also sponsors various different uh, podcasts. Now these are some of them are entertaining podcasts mm-hmm. like um, Black Tapes. I think there's one called Rabbits. And these are little series where they put them together, but they're like stories. And then the story ends, and then that's it. That's the only series. So you could do something like that where, okay, you have community, and that's for, let's say, six weeks. And then the next six weeks, you do something else. The next six weeks. But you kind of want to go back and rotate because something like community, they're always going to have changes. To right. exactly. They're always going to have new people coming in, new people or people leaving. And so that always changes. So you're going to want to keep coming back to that. Quite a bit. Right. Because six weeks is what, a month and a half? Yeah. Right? So if you kind of go up based on, on that, that's almost about 10, 10 series in a year, something mm-hmm. of that nature. Um, so that's about 60 um, podcasts a year. Well, 50. Because <laughs> that's something you take. Yeah, you get like eight or nine. Okay. And then you have to figure cancellations, things right. like that. You know, um, you know, and then how often or how much time do you have? to dedicate to sitting down. Because if we produce this for you, mm-hmm. we would basically curate all the guests. Okay. And then we would let you know, okay, so the proper way to do it is, do you guys use Google Calendar? Yes. Perfect. So we would sync up to your Google Calendar just to see the busy times. We could schedule, based on both of your schedules, you know, certain recording slots, and then we get people assigned for those. So you literally just come in, guest is here, Talk to them, record, they go off. What What are your days? I would say the best days for me on those type of day, deals are like Wednesdays. How's your Wednesdays? Uh, my, I have to. Yeah. 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 And we can we can figure that out. Yeah. So like yeah. the, the Wednesdays be like the best days for you to have the podcast. I could sit there and literally say every Wednesday I can do podcasts and make sure my schedule is cleared that day. Yeah. You um. Know, Wednesdays are like perfect. Fridays are. Pretty good, but it's more like afternoons. So it sounds like we want to start off with like one episode per week. Is that how it goes? One so you can do it whatever you want. I mean, right now we're posting about three episodes per week. But, and... Two audio and then a video, a video one, right? Yeah. So so we're getting three episodes per week. And then I kind of want to up that up to five if you include Ask Mark Anderson's. Now, those are pretty easy to record because it's just me in front of the mic taking a question that I got at some point in my career and answer the question. That's like five, it takes five to eight minutes to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And then that gets, so where I'm going to go is I have something being posted Monday through Friday, Mm -hmm. you know, but, um, and the more episodes with guests per week, the tougher and more difficult it becomes with scheduling because you have to be be in the office more to actually record, right? Mm -hmm. So once a week, it's a good starting point mm-hmm. because that at least doesn't put a lot of pressure on you to like record three or four times per week, right. you know? And so what we'll want to do at the beginning is get a few recorded, like three or four recorded and then launch it. Right. And how, how I mean, do you recommend like a podcast being like content for like 15, 20, 30 minutes? Um, like- that one's up to you. Ours usually go from anywhere from as short as 30 minutes to We've gone an over an hour a few times. One thing we notice is the time flies by. Yeah. You know, you'll do a 50 minute podcast. You know, you get to start to talk, talk, talk. Two minutes later, you're done, and it's been 50 minutes. Yeah. You know, it it goes by that fast. Because so, sometimes, because uh, I I, was, I forgot her name, but there was this one realtor in, in like South Carolina or something like that, and she was very very like easy to listen to, and her content was always great. But she always had like quick little, and it was YouTube videos. It wasn't podcasts, but it was quick like five seven minute just kind of snap us. She's like. Driving, driving from one appointment to the other. Great content, you know. And so yeah. that's, that's Is she from uh, Vancouver? No, she was just like South Carolina. I remember okay. she had the accent. Like she was from South um, Carolina. But yeah, yeah no, there's I mean, a Canadian uh, realtor that in female too. She does the exact same thing. Uh-huh. From appointment to appointment, she sets the camera on the dashboard yeah. and she's recording. Same concept. Like, exactly. Should I? You know, why? Should, when should we take? Uh, why do we not take pictures on a rainy day for our new listings? It was just, I mean, just random sure. content like that. No, no, just black. Very specific to realtors, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, it was just kind of building an audience. And she had tons of followers. And, and um, But I guess to the question is, you know, like, 
from a podcast perspective, I mean, do you should it be consistently the same amount of time every time so people can like, the coffee? Yes. No. Uh, yes, please, actually. Um, like, I mean, really, uh, I yes, feel yes, like yes, it comes yes. time again. It, it's that that one's on you. It's in, that ball's in your court. You need to decide what to do with it. Um, now, so you're talking about consistency. Yeah, because like so if I'm on a fly, like, hey, you know, I I got a great idea. I'd love just to talk about it for like it's like a ten minute okay. topic. I can just like you know record and just like okay. So and, how I feel about that is. Like, I think if you have enough episodes, well, so the reason why a lot of podcasts die is because of lack of consistency, right? Uh-huh. Just like anything else, why real estate marketing, land marketing, whatever. Yeah. A lot of people farming, they stop doing it and it eventually so dies, right? Yeah. So start with one episode per week, but if on the fly you have something you want to put out there, record it and put it out there. It's kind of really good. Okay. But at least you have one, your base every single week, okay. right? Okay. So you stay committed to that. But if there's anything additional, put it out there. I mean, yeah. the more content you can put out there, the better. Because okay. reality is, you're not starting the next podcast that's going to rival Adam Carolla or yeah. Joe Rogan, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You're, That's not going to be your goal. Your yeah. goal is to use this podcast to build more awareness in your business and bring in more business yeah. overall in the company and long term. Yeah. So if that's the goal... Getting Joe Rogan. Now, if it blows up, if you're that good enough and it blows up that big, then great. Like, that's awesome for you, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole bunch of, that's a whole different world then. But for most people, we're not going to be the next Joe Rogan or Adam Carolla. And so the reality is, if you stay focused and consistent on the one every single week, well, then, like, on the fly, if on a Saturday you're, like, you know, drinking coffee in the morning, you're like, hey, I had a client yesterday ask me this. This would be something cool to answer. Mm-hmm. Record it. Get a ten dollar lapel mic, attach it to your phone, record it, and then get it posted up on the podcast. Okay. It's kind of like when you think about it. Really, you kind of create the rules for how every episode is going to look. So I mean, if so, yeah. I mean, you you essentially have your basic kind of guidelines, what you need to do, but after that, you know. There are no rules, really. Because you, know, you can to... almost do it where it's like you have your, your series, but then you have a category that says like on the fly or something of that nature. Yeah, well, that's kind of like what we have. Like The way I kind of describe the structure of our podcast is there's the Mark Guzman podcast experience, right. but then there's three sub-programs that are under that main band. Nice. So, you know, it's almost like, it's almost, think of kind of like a TV station with its own program. There you go. You know, Perfect. so it's like we're, you know, not the po- Mark Guzman podcast experience isn't the podcast. Mm-hmm. It's just the whole banner that encompasses the three podcast programs that we produce. Right. So, I mean, if you could do something like that, where, you know, you have your main once a week episodes, there's that category. But then also sometimes there's these, you know, sub episodes where you guys kind of throw them out sporadically or, or there is a pattern, whichever you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Just branded as you know, this is a, a sub program or a side program of the overall podcast. That will also come down to how you title the programs, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you open up a podcast app and go to one of the uh, channels, you have all the podcasts listed there. Well, mine are like okay, episode 018, it's and, just and, the and it's got the guest, right? <laughs> and then episode 019. So you can kind of see how that progresses. But then in the mix of it all, you have Real Realtors 002. Real Realtor 003. Now people identify that as a completely different show okay. underneath that same topic. get your sub followers there. Like, oh, I like this topic, and then that's all I want to hear exactly. all five of these. Yeah, I like that yeah. because, to be honest with you, um, because, yeah, there's going to be times, I mean, like, obviously, I, we attend a lot of events. You know what I mean? It'd be nice to sit there and, and set something up at a, a podcast and get a couple of people's um, input on that yep. and then go back and, and re edit it and whatnot um, and just have that as live podcast. Sort of on the fly type stuff, and 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 this going a little bit deeper now, kind of talking about video a little bit. <clears throat> we want to start with the podcast, obviously, to get a following before we go straight video. Okay, honest. so don't worry about a following because okay. one thing you're going to learn is that it's really hard to measure and build a following on podcasts because so. Podcasting statistics is really hard to measure because they go off of downloads. Well, what's a download and how long do they listen to it? So it's not quite there. There's companies that are working on better stats Mm -hmm. and tracking, but no one's really picking up on that software. So it's really 
you have to look at it more from a branding perspective. Now, if it blows up and you start having a ton of downloads, now if you also do video, you track video views, right? So almost doing a podcast and a video would be at the same time be... So like what we're gonna do in the new studio um, mm -hmm. on my Mac, uh, there's a software called Wirecast mm -hmm. and you can attach cameras to it. It takes a live key from the cameras onto the Wirecast. You can switch between one or all three cameras mm -hmm. and um, it's like a live sports broadcast. You can switch between views and stuff wow. and it does Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Now you can also record separately the audio and the video if you don't wanna do live, but you can do live. And that's eventually where we're gonna go. Now, one thing I would recommend is for sure get some episodes under your belt first before yeah. you do live. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's funny like to hear, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I'll go back to some of my first episodes, and the, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> well, I still remember study. Eddie editing his first episode. He did the outro. Uh, you know, because we do an intro and outro for each one. Uh -huh. Remember that first, out, that first uh, outro he did? I think I had to cut me. 10 or 12 uhs or ums out of that. Uh, yeah. To, to, and then, of course, ever since then, though, there haven't been any. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you just get better over time. Yeah, yeah. that's one of those things. It's a natural progression. You're not going to hit the big time overnight. Yeah. You yeah. know, unless you're one of those one in a billion, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you are, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. But until that happens, um, yeah, it's got to be a slow buildup. That's totally natural. Just kind of one of the things I've been kind of doing is just keep the faith that you're doing what you need to be doing, you're getting it out there. Everything else is beyond your control. You know, you're I mean, produced, it's out there, you know it's out there. You know people are listening to it. You may not know how many people, but it's... You, you'll get some stats, day. but it's not always accurate. Like, there's, based on the number of stats and downloads I get, com and comparing it just to the number of experiences I have face-to-face -face of people that tell me they're listening to the podcast, I'm like, the numbers should be high. Let me ask you this, because I mean, because you you guys are doing so you, when you're doing your podcast, right? Your podcast is your your master plan, right? But then you also Facebook Live it and YouTube Live it, right? And That's going to be what we're going to launch next. Yeah. So do you? So they both go simultaneously. Because me, I'm I'm more of like a you know I'll subscribe to people or I'll like people on Facebook so to keep being getting their content. Do they? I mean. Does the natural evolving do they go side by side typically? I mean, should should we do podcast and build a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's just yeah. more yeah. expanding your distribution. Uh -huh. well, you I mean, know. some people, you know, they're going to want to listen, you know, in their car or on their phone, right. you know. So that's why we use, you know, mediums like SoundCloud or iTunes or Podbean. Uh -huh. But you know, then others, you know, they're going to be able to sit down in front of a computer and watch on YouTube or Facebook. Uh -huh. So it's like you know, there, there's more than one way to scan a cat. Okay, so yeah. you have Facebook, yeah. you have Instagram, you have Snapchat. No. no. Okay. So, okay. So you can do the same test, and I've been doing this test now for a while. I'll take a Snapchat, right? I'll save it. I'll then post it on Instagram Stories and Facebook Stories. Now, I'm friends with a lot of the same people on all three channels, but the people that watch me on Snapchat are not the same people that watch me on Instagram. The people that watch me on Instagram are not the same on Facebook. Yeah, but completely. Yeah, everyone uses a channel differently. So. That's why you want to do Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or at least put it on those channels along with all the other platforms because not everyone's going to see it on YouTube. And They're going to see it on Facebook. And also, like, a lot of people on, are auditory learners. Like, like, a lot of people, they didn't learn in school by listening to a teacher. They, they had to watch a video or something. And they're like, oh, I get it now. So, like, you also are reaching both demographics there, too. Okay. And okay. podcasting right now is they're expecting in the next ten years for it to quadruple okay. in size. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, just to become equivalent to like a YouTube channel or something like that. Yeah, because people are commuting longer; they're listening yeah. to podcasts. Right. And if you look at podcast statistics, people are switching from listening to, I call it like BS entertaining mm -hmm. entertainment, and switching more to informational because they're getting to a point where they kind of want to learn stuff. Right? Yeah, sit in the car for an hour and a half, you might as well, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And so they're switching to that. Now, here's the other interesting thing. The people that listen to podcasts consistently, on average, make $16,000 more per year than people that don't. Hmm. Well, more money, that's the demographic of people that, in our business, are going to be buying homes. Yeah, that's true. You know? Okay. So, so I think it's great to start. And when the average podcast only lasts for six episodes 
I mean, if you last, you know, twice as long, you're going to capture some listeners. Yeah. You last one or two years with consistent episodes every week. Yeah, and I have a question now. Um, and we mentioned Facebook. How how involved are you guys on Facebook? I mean, I assume you guys have your own personal that's accounts. Enough, but in terms for yeah. your business, how how much are you using Facebook for your business? I, I use it sporadically. So okay. um, yeah, same thing. Okay, so that's the thing. You definitely gonna need to get that. Like, I would definitely say like our social media is at like a one. Okay, so we definitely need to bump. Yeah, that up. so I, so I mean, I don't, don't have an Insta- five or six. Okay, one yeah, thing that I don't have an Instagram. Know. I don't have like a Snapchat. I don't even know how to okay. use Snapchat. To be honest with you. Um, All right. I have Facebook. I post once every 10 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so yeah. here's the thing, though, because I know in lending, you have a lot of restrictions right. on Facebook and that sort of thing. So the way you may want to do this mm-hmm. is, like, for me, I have a Facebook for my business, right? Mm-hmm. But in real estate, you don't have all the restrictions that lenders have to follow. Right. Now, what I would recommend is instead of creating a Facebook page for each of you mm-hmm. or for just one of you, I would, well, you do this one of two ways. You create the Facebook page under you, and then it's the real estate page, and then that way you can kind of bypass some of the restrictions, mm-hmm. and then you just post a show, and that's going to be the show page. Or you create a separate Facebook page for the show. And so you create a Facebook page for the actual show. And now it's the show, so you call, you know, give it a name like the Pittsburgh Hour or something like something that, like, yeah. you know. And then you're, it's at the Pittsburgh Hour, it's gonna be the Facebook, and then that's where you start to build up. And then what's great is that now here's one of the reasons why I love podcasting is because I like to go back and Google some of my guests, mm-hmm. and on page one of Google results is my podcast, and so I'm trending on page one for some of my guests, when they should be trending their own name for their own business. But that's where, that's that's another reason why you want it everywhere. Because when you do Google search, they're gonna search YouTube, because they own it. They're gonna search websites. You're gonna search a whole bunch of different websites to find that person's name. Well, let's say someone wants to find, or find out who the mayor is, or find out who's on the city council. They Google them, and then here comes your entire podcast where you interview every single person in the city council. Mm-hmm. Now you're trending higher, and then they get to know who you guys are. You know, the Pittsburgh yeah. Hour, what is that? And then they start to find out your lender, your real estate. And that's just stuff, that's just how it builds up. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking, like coming up with a, a show name and coming up with a page and a Snapchat like that, that you know we both have access to. Because from there, he still wants to brand himself as the realtor, I want to still brand myself as the lender, so that could, you know, ultimately get. And you can do that yeah. and use that main page to siphon people to follow you exactly. on other platforms. Exactly. Do the Twix right side and left thing campaign. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> I'll be the right side. Talk to each other with this with the screen right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, paint the like off in like half different colors, <laughs> like right down the middle. <laughs> but yeah, something like that. Um, you know, be I think would be relevant. And I was thinking, like, again, you know, like, based off what you guys said, yeah. Well, I was talking to him, like, what are we gonna do? Just talk about real estate and lending the entire time. I think that's cool, but at the same time, you know, we have different perspectives, different, you know, things that we go through and whatnot that we can actually bring, like, community. I think for Pittsburgh, a lot. Of, one question I get asked a lot, and I'm sure Chris gets asked a lot, is like, why did you guys choose the Pittsburgh? You know what I mean? Everyone says that to us constantly. And for me, I, I see something about Pittsburgh that some other people don't see. Yeah. And it'd be nice to kind of get that perspective. And that's such an easy thing for us as a podcast to do without putting that much effort for the first one yeah. because of our um, connection with the community. You know, doing something like this in Oakland is like, fuck, you know, like get well, the mayor fire. here and get a city council person. That's probably nothing. I could probably get all those people in, in one day to come out here, you know, and do, do a series with them. And we were even saying when we were coming in how nice Pittsburgh was looking. I was saying it looks like downtown Palo Alto down there now. Yeah, exactly. Um, A lot of people don't know that now. Yeah, and Uh, I had zero idea. Like, Pittsburgh was always just like, the ghetto. And this this year that's happening, you know, the fact of the matter is the bar stations are opening up now. Yeah. And that's a pretty big deal, you know, especially for like, you saw the commute come here. You saw everyone going this way. Pissed at each other, so that's gonna you know it's gonna get a little bit better. But 
that's the reason why, I mean, the person that bought my house uh, that I just sold in Pittsburgh came from Fremont. And they were living in a two bed and one bath at 2800 square, uh, 2800 bucks a month with four kids and them two. They came out here, bought a house for 430 four bedrooms, two baths. They think it's paradise. <laughs> we know, being in the business, that people buy in cities and neighborhoods because of, one, affordability, right. or two, the community, right? right? People will pay premiums for the community, mm -hmm. or they move into areas because they're more affordable, right? right? So if you focus on those two, then that's key right there. Right. You've got the community, which gives you a ton of people to interview. Right. You've got a brewing company right next door. You, you, yeah. you, you know, Simple. city council members, um, teachers. You say your wife's a teacher, right? No, no. Raul's wife's a teacher. Oh, Raul's wife's a teacher. Okay. <laughs> this guy's on the, um, Over here. This guy's on the um, city council. Okay. Latin, young Latin guy. He's, he's in his 30s, bro? Yeah. No, he's in his 20s. Yeah. 20 year old Latin guy. Yeah. He's made city council this year. Yeah. First time he ever ran, had no political background, nothing. Yeah. Uh, he was like on the city planning commission. That's really about it. What was the thing? Listing, listings Latinos, and what was the thing? In oh, and city? loans? In loans, in loans. <laughs> we were trying to think of that on the way here. I could not remember it. <laughs> That was a topic for the um, car convention, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listing Latinos and loans and whatnot. And see, and that's the other thing that I, I, I definitely want to feel like we, we can tap in is our culture, you know, being Latino or whatnot. That's, that's huge for us. Um, you know, and I was thinking more when I thought of the video side of things before, like I told you before, where, you know, there would be someone interviewing a, a guy in English, but the guy responds in Spanish with subtitles at the bottom, something yeah. like that. You know, because that's, for us, that's, that's, easy, that's another easy thing for you know, our culture is like simple. <laughs> it's not hard at all. So, like, yeah, but do you think Latinos don't listen to podcasts? They do. They do. Yeah, no, that's why I think it would be like if I thought a video, I would think that way. Um, but with the community, I mean, like, I would want to talk about Pittsburgh. But the other part I was thinking about too is um, the the communities within real estate, like Aria, NAREP, KRAB, the Association of Realtors. You know, because yeah. I don't think a lot of people understand those. What is a NAREP? What is an aria, whatnot? And the good thing is that we know these presidents that would give us a great podcast about that. Yeah. So, you know, so when we talk about community, it's not only we can focus on like Pittsburgh, but then we can also focus on the, the culture, you know, the community of the, the blacks, the Asians, the Latinos, the, the Association of Realtors, the women. Yep. You know what I mean? So, all that's community, you know, so, something of that nature. Yeah. Or we can call it culture, whatever the case may be. But then the next six months, okay, let's focus on. It's the seasons, right? So, like, this is good right now to kind of figure out that part. But I think after the first run of those series, we can just experience and come up with Yeah, you can else. do, like, uh, Pittsburgh Community. Right. Then do realtor or, or real estate organizations where right. you do NAREP, ARIA, all those different ones. Right. Then you do another series where um, I would – one thing that I want to do on our podcast is start hitting up teachers and principals. Why do you teach here? Why do you think this school is great? I can help with that. My mom's a teacher. She's Perfect. on all the California boards for teachers and everything. So Perfect. she can help you out with any teacher you ever want to um, know. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to do that, Sergio's, well, his wife's a teacher, but Sergio's um, girlfriend is the head counselor for Pittsburgh High. Okay. And she's tatted from here to here, bro. <laughs> it's super cool. So for her, she's like the head counselor. And, yeah. and like, you're the head counselor? Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. But she chose that. that for a reason, and then what she does is help kids get to the next level of college and stuff like that. Yeah, and one thing that Sam and I were talking about, what I want to do is start reaching out to even high school athletes. Oh, now, yeah. this is long term because if I reach out and interview high school athletes that are just killing it right now, you know they're going to go to college on sponsorship. Mm -hmm. If they kill it there, you know people are going to be googling their name, mm -hmm. right? If by the small percentage they make it big in the pros. People are really going to be Googling their name. And if it goes back to an interview on Facebook or YouTube or a podcast of Mark Guzman interviewed so-and-so, it's right there. The, the coach, um, Coach Galley, Pittsburgh High's coach, just won Bay Area Coach of the Week for Pittsburgh. And so he's all over the news right now. And so he's Galley's so yeah, yeah. So like a lot, one of my friends is a coach on two of my friends, like coaches on there. A lot of my friends are teachers at the high school. So even that, man, I mean, that would be and then you could definitely lock down super yeah. easy here. Just because, like I said, it's so local. Man, every time we go there, like on a Friday, there's like 30 teachers 
having beer there. Yeah. And I mean, that'd be great for your community. If you get yeah. Coach Galley on your show, yeah, I mean, yeah, that'd be a huge, especially if you're early on, if you got him on, that'd be a great way to kind of get a huge boost early on. You know what I would do? We talked to EJ Fair about sponsoring the podcast. And it doesn't have to be monetary, mm-hmm. just simple. You know how I do wine tasting or beer tasting mm-hmm. on the podcast? You can do something like that if the guest is open to it. And then just say, hey, thanks to EJ Fair, and make it sound like, oh shit, you're being sponsored. Yeah, that'd be so, I mean, when JJ's really good cool. just being used to beer. Yeah, yeah. And and all those things are cool next to Go buy beer. Like, right. I'm pitching East Brother Beer Company all the time on my podcast. I just go buy their beer. Yeah. And then just, you know, give them a shout out. Yeah, no, they're good people next door, man. They, they've yeah. always been been cool people. Um, yeah, I mean, here. Bring them on. Yeah. The Mecca, the guy there, Caramel. Yeah. Bring them a on. Too, you know? yeah. He's a staple right there. So, yeah, we have these, as a matter of fact, the Cupcake Company, but we don't know them, but they were actually featured on Cupcake Wars on Food Network. No, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you know how they have yeah, those things. Uh, the like TV shows they have out now are the yeah. <laughs> and, and Luffy's was uh, on the uh, you know where you, they had the big play con. You got to finish it. Oh and yeah, that, that show whatever well, it like is. Man vs. Food. They're, yeah, Man vs. Food. Yeah, yeah. yeah, featured on that one. They have one of yeah. those in uh, um, right next to San and Luis Obispo, um, Los Osos, a uh, place called Sylvester's, and the burgers are like that big, and like you have to sign a waiver form before you eat it, and you have to put a deposit down before you order it, like on the burger. It's crazy. Yeah, you wow. know it's funny because you know I think I mean we we were sponsored last year for their minor league team, um, the Pittsburgh Diamonds, and the, the guy that owns it is this um, Middle Eastern guy, but the. The actual head coach of that is Aaron Miles, who used to be a World Series You're guy. You're coaches. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. Program. So, and then yeah. um, this year, we're sponsoring the um, the Los Angeles College basketball girls. So we have our, our logo, um, Total Real Estate logo, on their um, hoodies this year. So we could definitely you know, interview the coach. Yeah, so there's, so obviously there's, a lot, there's yeah. a lot of ideas. And yeah. if you focus on the theme every six weeks or every two months, just keep it simple and easy math, right? Every two months you switch it up to something different. And you're recording ahead of time so you get things scheduled out, right? So you can start even pitching certain episodes coming up ahead. Hey, you know, August 1st, we're going to be switching to, you know, um, different realtor organizations. So mm-hmm. watch out for that, blah, blah, blah. You can even pitch stuff ahead of time. Right? That's cool. Yeah, I think I think the Pittsburgh community is so easy for us. So we can probably come up with more topics than we can. Then after that, go right into like culture about yeah. associations and whatnot. I think that would be super easy because I mean already if that's six weeks. There's six organizations that we can definitely you know interview instantly, yeah. you know, and get some good feedback on that. And that's already our first two episodes, you know, two first. That's twelve weeks worth of stuff. Yeah. Where's your guys' bathroom? Really quick. Straight, straight shoes, through. man. There's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Every end. <laughs> um, so, so I think um, I like that. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Really cool. So I think one episode per week okay. at minimum. Um, if you guys can eventually do more, great. You know, or if you do stuff on the fly, great, right? But at least you're consistent to one episode per week, right? Um, and then now here's the thing: if we produce for you, um, I assume you guys want to buy your own equipment. Then, well, you yeah. Equipment. Let us. What are your thoughts? I mean, like. Um, you know, I mean, we're taking your lead on this, to be honest with you. So, like, what do you, what do you guys feel that we should do? To be honest, like, if you're going to be consistent on it, yeah. I would say invest in your own equipment. Okay. You know, have it here. Okay. Um, I can send you links. You, you can buy everything on Amazon. Yeah. Um, I'll send you links to, like, various mics and uh, boom arms and, you know, to get all that set up. Okay. Um, your table, the round table, you want to make sure it's probably an inch, maybe an inch and a half thick. Table. Like his glass table, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Do we yeah, have one in there? Yeah, so it clamps to the edge of the tables. Yeah. It's got oh, rubber padding, okay. so it won't damage the table. Okay. But you don't want the table too thick because it won't fit around. Right, 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 right. right. So, um, so I can send you the links. I mean, I think if you're going to stay consistent on it, you should have uh, okay. the equipment in here. Okay. And then um, eventually, when you you want to do like a video, if you if you're going to go Facebook Live. YouTube live, I can give you the whole setup on that. Mm-hmm. I can do that, but so one episode per week, um, and then depending on the theme, we could curate like the people. Like if you have the list of people mm-hmm. that you have for all these different series, we can go ahead and contact them on your behalf, 
and just get them scheduled out for you guys. Sweet. And so that way you guys don't have to spend time. Well, I mean, we'd be basically, oh, we're calling from the Pittsburgh Tower. Um, the hosts are Michael and Chris, and you know, here's what we're looking to do and get them scheduled out. Yep. And then that way you know when to come in for a recording. You come in, record it. Um, we'll basically put all the questions in line for you. If there's additional questions, we can add to them. Okay. And then um, during the recording, you would just go ahead and edit or add things to it. You'll see it in real time. Okay. You, know, you just bring a laptop into there. Um, and yeah, I mean, so once that's recorded, we then do the post editing. Okay. Okay. Now, at that point, we can give you the file. You can do what you want with it. Or if you want us to take it a step further, we can then manage your social media pages for the actual, uh, like the Pittsburgh Hour, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, I don't know, I think managing is probably better. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think initially, just like, I think that would be our biggest hurdle. I think yeah. we can, like, definitely brainstorm, come up with some content, prepare ourselves mentally to be able to do these interviews and put that time and effort in. But I think the flip side of managing all those, I think that's, I think yeah, that would be, say that's that would be a little tough. Biggest issue. Okay, so yeah, that's something that because I, I, a lot of my jobs I've done, uh, I've been with you know Facebook marketing and stuff like that. So I mean, really, that's something we can definitely okay. handle on our side in terms of because I mean, one of the things I use uh, mainly to promote our podcast is Facebook. Uh-huh. You know, I post the links to all of our mediums up there, and you know, we're posting you know, every episode we post in the morning and in the evening uh-huh. um, at our high traffic times. So that's been the thing, kind of when I mentioned Facebook earlier. Um, I think you're definitely gonna need to start getting a Facebook presence before you launch. Um, so, however you guys decide to want to do your Facebook page, um, well, the, the problem with that is we're gonna have to start from scratch because when you create a uh, page that's called the Pittsburgh Hour, yeah, there, well, there's yeah, gonna be absolutely zero following. Yeah. So we have to create the page at least with some kind of content in there, right? Yeah. So wanna... we're gonna want to record a few episodes. Uh-huh. And then launch those episodes on the same day. That's what we did with my podcast. Uh-huh. And so we had, I think, three or four episodes yeah, live four as yeah. soon as we launched. Could you do one episode just kind of like, this is why I'm doing the podcast? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we yes. call that episode zero. Okay. But what I would say, like, because, uh, you know, uh, Chris, what I would do is, like, with your page, I mean, you're posting how many times on your <coughs> business page are you posting? Like, like so what I would do is, you know, before we start your podcast page from scratch, start with your page. So get your postings up. Try and post at least two, three times a day. Um, again, it could be business related. Uh, anything that kind of shows off who How you are. How many followers do you have on that business page? Like two hundred, not very many. Okay. Well, are, yeah. are most of those your friends already? Mm-hmm. No, I'd say about like 30, 40 percent of them are my friends. The rest okay. of them are all. Right. Well, okay. Anyway, well, so if we start a new Facebook page, the easiest thing to do is. Um, because we would be admin to manage the page, but we would add the two of you as admin also. Mm-hmm. You would then go out and invite all your oh, personal right. friends to come like yeah. the page. Right. Yeah. So we'll want a few episodes. Well, the good thing, yeah, the good thing about that, I and mean, then I think I have like close to a thousand. You probably have something like that too. So that would be us inviting like two thousand people. Yeah. So I mean, on the get a couple hundred people. Yeah, we'll get an easy couple hundred. So people. basically, it's like the back of what I was saying. So the, the Facebook thing that you do now. So I mean, I assume aside from your business page, you guys have personal pages too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Use your personal page to say, hey, like Chris, especially you, hey, follow my real estate business page. And then once you get the, the podcast Facebook page up, you can promote the podcast Facebook page through both your personal and your business Facebook pages. And you kind of see how that kind of starts to snowball. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, what I would say for you in the meantime, kind of like your, your homework for now, uh-huh. boost, start posting more on your business page just so you can kind of, because Facebook, the way the algorithm works um, is that, you know, if you post too much, it's going to sink you. But there's a perfect, you know, kind of spot where, you know, you get two, everything I've read says two, three posts a day. I've done sometimes we were posting 48 times a day. That was, that was when I was working at a radio station. That's different. For you, two, three times, a, you know, once a day, twice a day, you know, kind of ramp it up a little bit and start getting more reach. The more reach you get, the more followers you get. The more followers get, the more reach. You know, it circles on and on and on. And then when you start building up a stronger Facebook presence, you want to start promoting the podcast and, hey, it's coming. What I did for for our podcast, I started a two-week countdown. Each day I'm posting, you know, morning and the evening, 
you know, 14 days, 13, 12, mm -hmm. 11, 10, 9, 8. You're building up to, you know, when it's coming out. So, you know, Facebook is great for that. It's about, but you got to know, you know, how to utilize the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you could schedule posts on your business page. I saw that the other day. So, I would start using that. Um, the times, you know, look at your analytics on your Facebook pages. Find out when are a lot of your followers on. So, if, you know, because a lot of people... You may not have <laughs> followers. Those are usually 1,000 followers. Um, and, well, I mean, it's, yeah. it's something you have to play with, but a lot of things... <laughs> like, think about also, you know, when are you on Facebook? You know, when you're on Facebook, it's probably the same time when a lot of other people are on Facebook. A lot of people like to check Facebook at work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, around, you know, 9.30 to 10.30, that's when a lot of people are going to take their morning breaks when they're at work. Um, so, you know, they'll flip up Facebook along their phone. So you want to focus, you know, post in that time. Well, I learned, we ended up starting doing when I was working in radio, is we would post, don't post on the top and bottom of the hour. Post at 09.39. Because at a lot of places... They post at top and bottom of the hour, so all these posts are coming out at once. But then, you know, after all those posts get cleared out of the feed, you know, 10 minutes later, you know, there's less coming out. So that way, you know, there's less uh, competition you have to fight with. Okay. So we started doing that, you know, nine at the 9 and 39, and, you know, you start seeing a little bit more because your post doesn't have to fight with as many people to get to the front yeah. line. Okay. Um, and then again, it's all just kind of you kind of find a thing. They, they change the algorithm all the time. So the minute, so if you ever feel like you know all of a sudden what you were doing that's working isn't working, it's not you. It's Facebook's fault. Um, but yeah, it's definitely kind of make sure we're doing everything you can to get the posts out um, at times when people are going to be on. Uh, again, I mentioned the morning, evenings. You know, when people get home, they're going to be on Facebook. So that's why you know when I post you know our podcast, I always try to get them up. You know. Uh, either you know ten oh nine or ten thirty nine, then I'll repost it again at either six oh nine, six thirty nine, or or seven oh nine, because those are high traffic times when people are at home, they're on the TV, flipping on their phone, because everyone's dual screening nowadays. No one's just watching TV anymore. They're watching TV, they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, <coughs> stuff like that. So you get you know your content out the times when they're most likely to be doing this. I mean, it's kind of like you're just kind of taking stabs in the dark, yeah. but you know, with a little bit more. This is all the stuff we would do for you, um, except just the kind of the prep before. Yeah, this is kind of what I'm suggesting you should do okay. between right. now and when you do finally get the podcast launched. Uh -huh. um, kind of ways to build up, build up your own Facebook brand because I maybe mean, that's the big thing nowadays. Yeah. I mean, Facebook is kind of like it's becoming the king of how we interact, um, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. That's just the world. And here's the thing, too. Like, on your Facebook business pages, if you get a comment, you want to respond. You right. want to treat it as a community page, not as a posting page. And like their comments, too. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like the comments and then communicate back and forth. Even if it's a simple, hey, thanks. You know, or um, if you like to see something in Pittsburgh, let us know. You know, communicate with them. Because eventually, as people communicate back and forth with you, or liking your comments because you respond back with thank you or whatever, Facebook algorithms will pick that up as interaction. Hmm. Interaction, they're saying, oh, these people will interact with their page more than other pages. They're likely going to want to see them first on their news feed. And so if you go through your news feed, you'll notice a lot of a lot of the dates and postings jumps around. It's not consistent unless you manually change that. So Facebook is really feeding you stuff that it thinks you want to see. And that really comes down to how you interact on Facebook. So if you're interacting with a page or a radio station or a podcast, and they're responding back to you, and you're responding back to them, Facebook's going to say, you probably follow them. You probably listen to them more than all these other pages. And they're going to put those posts up front. Okay? See, that's why I could fight some of these pop-up online. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, that, that makes total sense, man. Because I, I have a mortgage um, page that I, I created or whatnot. I think um, it's up to a couple hundred. He has his, and then we have our own personal whatnot. So I, yeah, with that audience, we can create the, the Facebook podcast um, thing or whatnot. So that that's yeah. pretty simple. Now let me ask you this: and how what do you what would it take for us to get started? Um, and what sort of things that do we need to kind of say, okay, we're gonna so you need a table, okay. For podcasts, so you need a table, and then you need the equipment. So I'll email you the list of the equipment, 
Now you're going to need at least, well, obviously two mics for each of you. You're going to want a third one for the guest. If you want to do a two guest show, you're going to need a total of four mics. I think four mics is good. Cause I would recommend, recommend it just yes. in case. You yeah, decide. exactly. Yeah, or if there's like a husband and wife team or something like that, they want to come in. Well, yeah, I was thinking like for Pittsburgh, for example, we don't want to go like have an episode just with the mayor, just, you know, where we can get probably the mayor, CEO of the chamber, and, you know, somebody I would, else. No, I would go the opposite way. I really? wouldn't have a full episode just with, you'll be surprised how fast these episodes go okay. as you start talking. I mean, look, we're already into an hour into our meeting. That's right. And take those right? Out. So when you're podcasting and talking back and forth, time flies by really fast. 30 minutes goes by super fast. Got it. And so with the mayor, and you'll see when we start putting questions, it's more about, hey, what are you doing to help the city? Right. You know, it gets more into, hey, why did you decide to run? When do you get into politics? Right. What was the thing that made your mind switch that I want to jump into politics? What's your biggest achievement? What's your you know, what's your biggest regret or what's the one thing you couldn't do that you wish you did? And so all these questions start getting them to think and giving you a ton of answers. And do we give them the really questions deep. prior to the podcast? That's up to you. Um, the way I look at it is we're not a journalism entity. You know, we're not CNN or ABC News or anything like that. So we're not trying to put any of that gotcha stuff or putting any Damn, of that journalism. Some people will yeah. ask you and give it to them. And... People will, we've had a few people come in with notes and they've already answered the questions and we'll get through maybe a third of them because you want to keep it natural. Mm -hmm. And so as you're talking, there might be something that pops up that intrigues you and you're like, wait a minute, what do you say about that? And then all of a sudden you got 30 minutes on that topic and now you've done it. But I look at the outlines not so much as a, this is what we're going to talk about. It's more of a this is a general suggestion as to what we're going to cover. If it goes, if the conversation goes elsewhere, so be it. Um, again, you're, you, this isn't a legitimate interview. This is a sit-down conversation, kind of easy listening. Um, no one's getting grilled here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to bring up anything like "hot mayor." I just got gotcha. you. You know, so I mean, it's like you're getting to know someone. It's casual, it's calm, it's easy. So I mean, yeah, if you want to prepare notes, send them ahead. Yeah, let people know. Hey, this is what we're going to talk about. Um, is there anything that you don't want to talk about here? Or is there anything here that you need corrected? You know, like I, I, you know, I got the information wrong. Tell me now so we can fix it so that way we don't have egg on our face when we do the show. Okay. Um, so stuff like that, yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, for us, it's easier just to send the outline ahead. Everyone's on board and knows what we're talking right. about. It kind of, you know... It, it eases them down. Yeah, I, I think It makes so it feel too. more comfortable. Yeah. You don't have to worry, again, about being put on the spotlight. Yeah, I think that's, that would be... Good to have with people because again, you know, especially like, politicians. Yeah, yeah especially those goal. type what of people. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. You want to make sure, it, but also too, they kind of will get behind it a bit more if they kind of are open to the questions and you yeah. know, like, okay, these guys really just want to know some of this stuff. Yeah. So, so basically, the how I guess the relationship would work is so you know, Mike and I, we you, know, so you help us prepare, but you guys don't necessarily have to be here for the podcast, right? We uh, just Sam, send you the Sam would likely be here okay. for the recording. Okay. Just because I take the notes for the show notes. Notes, okay. and then okay. if you're busy, it's going to be hard for you guys to be typing notes and coming up with questions, mm -hmm. you know, like on the spot because you're busy interacting with the person. Right. So him on the sideline, he interacts using Google Docs, gives you additional questions. You see those, and then you can jump into those questions. Got it. Right. And also, I hand write the notes because if you're typing, that's going to sound show up on the audio. Mm -hmm. And so, although you said um, you're saying that we could, um, we're going to do it once a week. We would do the recordings once a week as well. Yeah. Now yeah so be... we have to figure out the structure for that because okay. I know mean, you guys said Wednesday is your best days. Um, I mean, there's no way of knowing what your guests' best, best days right, are. Right. So I um, could make other things work. Yeah, but I would. Yeah. Sit, if I... Like we we have recordings, you know, on any day of the week. Sometimes we even have them on on weekends. Okay. Um, it's really just kind of the way I see. If you give us, if you give us the time slots of certain days mm -hmm. and if we can sync up to your Google calendar mm -hmm. then we won't we don't see personal data we just see busy right mm -hmm. if we sync up to that Google calendar we know your free times and so if you're willing to do recordings as early as the, let's say nine or ten mm -hmm. and as late as five then we know we can lock you in now, if you have Wednesdays as preferred days great we'll put you into Wednesdays as much as possible okay. but if we need to put you in on a Monday or Tuesday or Thursday then we have that option to reschedule the in on Okay, so we can sit there and say, okay, we're going to do Mondays, 
Mondays between you know twelve to four is gonna be perfect. Yeah. If we can do Tuesdays before two o'clock or something. Yeah, like but that. if you keep your schedule and Google Calendar yeah. um, up to date, yeah. then there's no need for us to constantly get a hold of you. Hey, are you available on this yeah. time? Yeah. We see that you're you've got open time. Yeah. And we slot it in. Yeah, I'm a very methodical on my calendar. <laughs> 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 yeah. and and you even have it says wake up, get ready. Yeah, yeah like, definitely yeah, drive. Need some, some flexibility here because yeah. we're dealing with people you know out there in the world. Well, who, I'm, we want to consider own. this as our marketing. You yeah. know, so like, there's other marketing to do out there, and where we're doing the, you know, the postcards, the leads, and all that stuff. That stuff runs itself now. You know, for us, we're like, what, what could we do? That's gonna, you know, you gotta put time into marketing every week. You just have to. That's just part of your business. So we want to make it work. You know, um, I think the first go around is gonna be cool and easy because we said community. And we focus just on Pittsburgh. We could probably do a lot of recordings. You know, same day because we could fit a lot of those people, launch it, and and then from there we'll get back to. You know the chaoticness of in a podcast, yeah. but everyone here in Pittsburgh, they're, once they're here, they're here. You know, and these this is the nine to five town. You know, so a lot of these people are here. Um, usually, you know, anytime I could skip, like if I had to meet the CEO of the chamber, we could probably see them like next Tuesday, no problem. You know, because they're so local people. You know, yeah. you know, it's not like like I said, like Oakland, where it's like, oh my gosh, I have all this shit going on. Yeah. Um, okay. Most of these people, um, they also live in Pittsburgh. So, you know, even catching them, you know, on the weekend or something like that, too. Okay, so then we would curate the guests for you. Okay. We probably would want to do, like, one or two weeks of jam-packed recording so we can get three or four episodes recorded. Yep. And then that way we're ready to launch. And then after that, it becomes a lot easier as mm -hmm. far as um, recording. But um, we would uh, curate. We would um, help produce, like, during the actual recording. Mm -hmm. Post-edit. Then on top of that, um, we would then go ahead and once that's done and it's ready to launch, we then uh, syndicate it to everywhere. Um, we'll get it up on iTunes, eventually iHeart, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll get it syndicated out to all those websites, um, the social channels, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, we can even link it up on, well actually no, it goes up on LinkedIn and various other so we'll take care of all that. So the only thing you would have to take care of is showing up and then recording it and then done. Yeah. And then a few days later, we'll have it done and ready and then it goes live. Yeah, when it comes to guests, I mean, we can help you find guests and obviously if you have your own guest ideas, mm -hmm. we'll yeah. do those too. Because like what I do is like every morning I just kind of flip around on various uh, news and blog sites from around the Bay Area and it's like, all right, who's making news right now? Who's doing something interesting? Yeah. Who looks interesting? And then, you know, I'll, I send them to Mark saying, hey, these guys look cool because you want to make sure there's no psychopaths or anything going <laughs> on. Um, and, you know, again, usually I send them out, yeah, sure, do it. So, and then every once in a while, you know, he'll send me, it's like, hey, I found this guy, get him on. So, I mean, it's definitely, you know, when it comes to guests, you know, we'll work together on kind of just, yeah, anyone who captures your interest. Yeah. Yeah, and then just give us a list of who you have in mind, and then we can reach out to them. And then eventually when it gets up and rolling, um, one of the things to do is like hit up people on the DM, like Instagram, and look up Pittsburgh. Look at the top uh, trending posts, and you'll notice a lot of these people have one or two or three, four hundred likes on their posts, and they're tagging Pittsburgh right here. So they're here in Pittsburgh doing something. Right. And so you reach out to them and invite them to come on to the podcast. Right. You know, and most people, to be honest, um, I think we've had mainly yeses. I mean, I don't think there might we've be. We've had a couple of times where we have that. one lady who thought it wouldn't be worth her time. I'm like, yeah, it's for you. But, <laughs> and then there's, yes, I mean, everyone has their own reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, people are people. Yeah. You can't change that. Yeah, I think for um, the first two rounds, we'll be within our network, we could probably come up with some good guests. Once we start getting creative and coming up with different ideas, we'll yeah. probably start. Well, that's kind of how we start. We started off mainly with, uh, he had a list of people, you know, right off the bat who he wanted to have on. Mm -hmm. So I started there, starting your network, starting with people who you know will come on, yep. um, you know, friends, family, stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, once you start trying to get that base started, then, yeah, start venturing out. Yeah, start venturing out. And one thing I would also recommend is if you want to jump into um, certain real estate Topics, mm -hmm. maybe do a couple episodes where you bring in other agents. Right. You know, because I know they might be competing with you, mm -hmm. but they would bring you business, right? 
And the funny thing that I found is in featuring agents from other companies <coughs> on my podcast is that um, they all find it very cool. And they're like, and for me as a product manager, they're like, oh yeah, when I have something, I'll send you business. Because Felicia, you just have Felicia. Yeah, yeah. Right? You have Felicia. You know, be another good person for you to have. Um, I think we both met her for the first time. That girl named Carla, Carla Morales. She got a real estate license at the age of 18. Okay. You know, so that's, that was pretty cool. Like, why did you decide not to go to college and get your real estate license instead? You know yeah. what I mean? And, and she just turned, um, she, no, I'm sorry, the age of 19. And um, now she's 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, she's with Keller Williams. She's all sold into it. And she seems pretty active already within her first year or whatnot. Yeah. But someone like that would be, could stand out because, again, they're young. They're from a different industry, I mean, different company or whatnot. So that, that makes sense too. Yeah, I would love to have different lenders that come and do stuff that I don't do at all, you know? So that would, that would be great. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. It truly means the world to me. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing. Make sure to go visit the website. I've got the timestamps, all the notes there. Thank you to our producer, Sam Lubman. And don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast. I really, really want to thank all of you for listening. It means the world to me, and I hope today's episode provides you value in your day-to-day life. I created this podcast to help showcase the many great people that live in this world and help share some knowledge that I've learned along the way in life. Again, thank you for listening. Check out our sponsors, and I'll catch you on the next episode.